Now we're in the arena. We want to work on this on our spins and our shoulder control. All right. Now the first thing to understand or realize, you know, about these spins is it, is, is it isn't just a turn to the right, you know, or a turn to the left. There's more involved in that. And our biggest mistake is we focus so much on the outside and we push the horse to the right that we don't teach a horse to pick up his inside shoulder and step to the right. So our first control or our first idea of how to get to control is by we're going to use the hind quarter. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the horse to go forward. As the horse is going forward, we're going to pick up one rein, and we're going to pick up this rein and pull his head around as far as I have to to make the hip move to the left. I'll release it and let him go. Again, and I'm going to alternate sides. I don't want to stay on one side. I want to alternate sides during this exercise. I'm going to move the hip over away and then let him go. All right. Again, what this is doing is it's, it's, it's going to take the horse. It's also going to start to soften his nose up relax his neck and give us control of his hind quarter. Now his hind quarter is the engine. This is the engine back here and it's what drives the forward motion through the front end. If I can't control the engine or how much energy is coming through that front end, then I can't get the shoulders to go where I'm wanting them to go. So it's important that I'm able to control this energy. Now if you picture a garden hose, this is a garden hose here and we're turning the faucet on back here and what we're trying to do is crimp the hose up here. Well, if I crimp that hose on some of these horses, and I don't have an, a strong enough hose here, then what happens, I start blowing leaks in that hose, and the shoulder starts jumping around, or the hip starts jumping around, and I lose control of my horse. These exercises are designed on how to build control, you know, and how to keep control of your horse. So, during this exercise, you know, the first part we got to work on is controlling the engine, the drive right here. So, what I'll do is, by picking up one rein, I'll just work on moving that hip to the left release it and let him go. I'll pick up this rein, work on moving this hip to the right. As it moves to the right, I'll release it and let him go. Again, when we, we talked about those motivators, the spot, the direction, and the reward. Now again, to break it down here, the motivator I'm using is this rein. The horse wants me out of his mouth. He doesn't want me pulling on his mouth. He wants me out of his mouth. So what he's looking for is that release. The spot I'm working with is a spot on this hip, just a quarter size spot. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that, that spot that direction, or this spot over here this direction. That's all I'm focusing on. I don't care about anything else, you know, because I, I don't have enough control to control everything else. So all I want to do is control that spot and move it that direction. So as I'm doing this, and I'm having the horse move forward, when I pick up this rein and move that spot, I'm going to release it and let him go. So again, now the motivator was the rein, the spot was on the hip. The direction was away from it, and as soon as he did it, I let I released, I gave it back. That was my reward, my yes answer cue, a release of pressure. So again, do it again, I'll pick up the one rein. Now, you might have to pull really hard. You, you know, first couple times these horses, you might have to pull really hard to get that hip to move. You know, again, don't jerk. Just pick up the rein and you add, you add as, much, as much pressure as you, as you need to to get that hip to move. There's a couple of esca esca or, uh, escapes the horse is going to go through. All right? When he doesn't know what you're looking for, it's not the horse is, is trying not to do it. The horse wants to do it. But a couple things he might do is if you start adding pressure here, he might start to back up. You start pulling here, he's going to start to back up. What you're going to do from here is you can't release the rein. Because if you release the rein, then you're telling him that what you want, what he was doing at that moment was correct. So you can't release the rein you know, at that moment. You have to wait until that hip moves. So if I go forward and this horse starts to back up here, if I release it and try to go back forward and then go back into it, all he's going to do is just get faster at backing up. You know, we're teaching our horse to back up now you know, and not move that hip over. So it's important, don't release that rein until that hip moves. So if he starts to back up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold pressure and I'm going to drive with my legs both legs at the same time until he starts to go forward and that hip starts to move. The longer I hold this rein, the less I'm going to look for. All right? If I hold this rein for 30 seconds and I need to find something you know, to let go, to give the horse to tell me he's on the right track. Anytime you start with your goal, you start with a wreck. All right? Anytime you start with your goal, my goal is to have the horse's nose soft, you know, break at the pole, lower his, the elevation of his head, and take a nice step to the right with his hip. If I start with that right off the bat, it's just going to be a wreck. It's asking for too much. You know, so I can't do that. What I have to do is just look for something that's on that right track. 
So as I pick it up, you know, I'm gonna pick it up, wait till that hip starts to move and release it, let go. It's important to give it all the way back. Don't, don't just hold and kind of go like this and give it a little bit back. We're getting the habit of doing this. He'll, he'll move the hip and we kind of give it back like this and go forward. Release it, give it all the way back. The more you give back, the softer your horse is gonna get. All right, so first all we do is we move the hip. As the hip moves, release it, let him go. Pick up the other side, move the hip. Release it, let it go. Again, all the way back. Pick up the rein, move the hip. Release it, let it go. Now, when he starts to get it, when he starts to, as soon as that hip starts to move and he starts to understand, then what I want to do is I want to raise my expectations. Right, your horse's performance can't get better without you improving your expectations or raising your expectations. So, as I'm moving that hip, once the hip moves now, you know, again, that was all I was looking for in the beginning. Now I might want that nose to soften up. So I'll make the hip keep moving. So as the hip keeps moving, all right, I'll keep moving the hip until his nose starts to go toward my boot. And I'll release it and let him go. And what this will do is start to soften his neck, neck up, you know, vert, uh, side to side, start to soften that neck up. The, uh, again, that bit is where all my control is. If, if I went out to shake somebody's hand, and they took their hand, you know, what they immense, immediately what they do is they put their hand out to shake your hand. If they don't give me that hand, I can't shake it. It's the same with this horse. If I pick up this rein, you know, and I touch this rein, and he takes his nose and he just rips, rips his nose away from me, then nothing is going to get soft here. So it's important that when I touch this rein, that this horse knows, you know, to give me his head. That when I pick up that rein, don't fight from it, but give me that head, and I release it. Now, again, at first, that's not going to happen. It's not going to look like flash here. You know, at first, he's going to be stiff, and he'll be pulling on the bit, and all you have to worry about is just move the hips side to side and just keep moving the hips. Right, and do that for about 30 minutes you know, and, until those hips really get soft moving back and forth, and then you'll start to see that nose start to soften up and, and the head go side to side also. Then we start raising our expectations. We start asking more. You know, it's not... You know, repetition without change causes aggravation. But repetition with change, you can do the same thing all day, you know, and the horse doesn't get tired of it because we're always improving something. We're making something better. So what we're doing here is if I did the same thing all day long, then the horse is going to start getting aggravated. But as long as I'm making it better, as long as I'm asking for a little bit softer nose or a little bit larger step with the hip, you know, or the horse responding a little bit quicker off that rein, then I can do this exercise for a long amount of time and have the horse not get aggravated with it. Again, it's important to remember, repetition without change causes aggravation. <laughs>